Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is the first episode, so uh, let's dive into it. The promise of AI ever since its inception in the 1950s and repeatedly ever since has been to build machines with intelligence comparable to humans. And in my series, AI is Not Real, we're going to explore why not once has the field ever delivered on that promise. With each episode, we'll take a different look at a particular issue within AI, and we'll try to build episode by episode a better understanding of why almost 70 years since we've coined the term artificial intelligence, no such thing exists today. In 1973, the computer scientist and cognitive scientist Alan Newell was tasked with reviewing the submissions to the 8th Annual Carnegie Symposium on Cognition. The idea was that he would review the submissions to the symposium and see what kind of progress we've made towards understanding human cognition. The problem for Alan was it was difficult for him to really see any progress being made towards understanding the human mind at all. His comments came in the now famous paper, You Can't Play 20 Questions with Nature and Win. In it, he detailed how recent advances in cognitive science weren't really bringing us closer to a holistic, complete understanding of how the human mind worked. His feelings on the matter can be pretty much summed up in this really famous quote of his. I'm a man who is half and half. Half of me is half distressed and half confused. Half of me is quite content and clear on where we are going. His point was that half of him sees the benefit of a lot of the research coming into the symposium and understanding the various minor aspects of cognition that are being studied in each of these papers. But then the other half of him really couldn't see how any of these individual pieces informed a more cohesive theory of cognition. Now, he believed that the research he reviewed that year had merit, and he even described it as a sample of the best work in current experimental psychology. He believed that if we wanted to understand how the mind worked, we needed to change how we were approaching cognitive science. Rather than experimenting only on aspects of human cognition in a vacuum, we also needed to spend time building theories, perspectives, and frameworks for taking the results from these research programs and piecing them together into a cohesive theory of cognition. To this day, that paper is shared among students of cognitive science and artificial intelligence as a cautionary tale on the importance of building cohesive theories of intelligence and not focusing too much on benchmarks and singular tasks, but to really take a step back and understand the bigger picture of what your work as an AI researcher or a cognitive science researcher is saying about the end goal, which is building machines with intelligence comparable to humans. Though I read the paper a few years ago for the first time, I find myself going back to it today to really understand the current state of AI and why we really haven't been able to deliver on our promise we made almost 70 years ago. Today, AI is sort of like the state of cognitive science Alan Newell addressed in 1973, sort of a hodgepodge of different research programs that don't really have a lot of connection between each other and don't really seem to fit together into a cohesive theory of intelligence. While each of these subfields has made progress on their own goals, some would argue that the whole field of artificial intelligence is no closer to its original promise than it was when it first started in the 1950s. Pointing out the many ways in which this might be true is the whole focus of this series. And to start off, I'm going to focus on a problem that's been getting a lot more attention recently in machine learning specifically, and that is the problem of generalization. It's going to be the topic of this episode and next episode. The definition of generalization we'll be developing today largely comes from Francois Cholet, an AI researcher at Google and the author of the deep learning framework Keras. Everything that we'll be talking about today that we're referencing can be found below. Informally, generalization is the ability to handle data or scenarios you've never seen before. It's a concept that predates machine learning and originally is from statistics. More formally in statistics, generalization is a measure of how well a statistical model will perform on data that was not in its training set. Because of the rise in popularity of machine learning, especially due to the onset of deep learning, Generalization theory and getting AI systems to generalize to novel data have both become popular research topics. Francois Cholet details two kinds of broad generalization, system-centric generalization and developer-aware generalization. System-centric generalization is the ability of a system to handle data or scenarios that it has never seen but was designed to handle. System-centric generalization is found in all of AI and machine learning. A good example is supervised image classification. In this setting, what you have is a data set of images of a known structure, such as ImageNet, where you know the size of the images beforehand, and you take that data set and split it into training and testing subsets. 
System-centric generalization in this setting would measure the average error that your model would get over the test set after being trained on the training set. Developer-aware generalization is the ability of a system to handle data or scenarios that the system has never seen and was not designed to handle. This is the same as system-centric generalization, except now we're accounting for the knowledge built into the system by the developer. Developer-aware generalization is a stronger form of generalization than the system-centric form. This is because developer-aware generalization is explicitly measuring how well a system can adapt to things it's not designed to handle, while system-centric generalization is explicitly not. There are no examples of developer-aware generalization in artificial intelligence today. In fact, the only examples of developer-aware generalization come from the natural world, and some of the more fascinating ones come from humans. We'll be diving into this topic in the future episodes, but to push the example further, you can look at the history of humanity on Earth. As humans, we constantly do things that we were not evolved to do. You sitting down watching this video right now on YouTube is one of them. In fact, every single interaction you've ever had with digitized, mechanical, whatever kind of technology outside of primitive tool use is also another example. Even though we weren't evolved to do these particular things, in essence, we were not designed to do these particular things, we can and we excel at doing them. That is a really good example of developer-aware generalization. In addition to these two broad kinds of generalization, Francois Cholet also defines four degrees of generalization. Absence of generalization, local generalization, broad generalization, and extreme generalization. Each one of these degrees increases in capacity and encompasses the previous one. Now, the first degree, absence of generalization, is pretty self-explanatory. It defines a system that's unable to handle new data or data that it's not designed to handle. The second one is really interesting. This is local generalization or otherwise known as robustness. This is the focus of most of machine learning research and really where the ball stops in terms of generalization for AI systems. This is the ability for a system to handle new data from a known distribution. This is essentially the system-centric generalization we spoke about earlier. The image classification example goes really well here. We would take our image classifier from before, train it on cats and dogs, and then take from that same data set an image that it hasn't seen before and ask it whether a cat or a dog is in that picture. The local generalization that's going on is generalization to known data, data from a known distribution or from a known structure. We're taking from the same data set we're just picking from our testing set rather than our training set. The next degree of generalization is where things get interesting and where AI falls short. This is broad generalization, otherwise known as flexibility according to Francois. And this is approaching human-like generalization. No artificial intelligence system belongs here in this bracket today. A good example is L5 self-driving, or as Francois notes in his paper, uh, passing Steve Wozniak's coffee cup test, where we would ask, a robot to go into any arbitrary kitchen and ask it to make us a cup of coffee. If the robot can go into any arbitrary kitchen like you or I could and make a cup of coffee without anyone intervening on it, then it would have passed that test and it would have been a good measure of broad generalization. Now the next level or the next degree of generalization is extreme generalization. This is human only generalization or as Francois says, only biological forms are examples of extreme generalization. This is the ability to handle completely novel tasks with only abstract relations with previous experiences, if any at all. And of course, if a system were to perform extreme generalization, it would have to do so without human intervention again. Francois describes this degree of generalization as the ability to adapt to unknown unknowns. This is over both system-centric generalization and developer-aware generalization. In the system-centric case, we perform extreme generalization because we see novel objects with no natural forms every day. For example, this microphone right in front of me, the lights in front of me, the computer screen. We were not evolved to see these images, yet we can parse them very well. The other case of developer-aware generalization is constantly seen throughout scientific, mathematical, and creative discovery. Paintings, math, computer science, biology, all of these forms that we endlessly create are examples of how we can develop or aware extreme generalized to our world around us. Stepping down the ladder of degrees of generalization, broad generalization is considered a hallmark of intelligence. And while we as people do it all the time, state-of-the-art AI is incapable of it. 
The most advanced AI systems today all fall within the bounds of local generalization. And even within local generalization, state-of-the-art AI is markedly bad at it. Really potent examples of just how bad state-of-the-art AI is at local generalization come from computer vision and game playing. They're potent because it's relatively easy for us to see in these settings how AI fails to generalize. But don't be confused. Every AI system is bad to varying degrees at local generalization within their own setting. And a huge part of machine learning research now is figuring out why. In the case of computer vision, we can look at how state-of-the-art AI behaves around images with everyday objects. A widely used recognition model, the Google Inception V3 model, can correctly classify objects in these images as they are, just like you and I can. But the moment that you take these images and modify them slightly to produce these images, the model fails terribly, whereas you and I can see it's the same image. More sinister examples of poor local generalization within computer vision can be found with commercially available self-driving cars. Groups have been able to demonstrate that taking the kinds of systems found in autonomous vehicles and exposing them to daily objects with simple modifications such as stickers or marks can trick them into thinking a stop sign is actually a 45 mile per hour speed limit sign or trick a Tesla into accelerating by 50 miles per hour on a road by slightly altering a speed limit sign with a dash. Now, in the case of game playing, we have some of AI's biggest hits in the last 10 years. These systems are going to be the topic of conversation for our next episode when we discuss why it is that AI today is struggling to locally generalize within particular domains and what kind of research is being done to have them go from local generalization to broad generalization. So today we're just going to cover how these systems showcase their inability to locally generalize within their domains. DeepMind's AlphaGo and AlphaStar systems have become world champions within their respective fields, with AlphaGo being basically unbeatable within the board game Go and AlphaStar becoming grandmaster within StarCraft II last year. But when we analyze the local generalization behaviors of these two systems, we see a less optimistic picture. AlphaGo can't play on boards other than 19 by 19. The moment you change the board size, the entire team of DeepMind in charge of AlphaGo has to completely retrain the system. And once retrained, AlphaGo can no longer play on the original 19 by 19 board without serious detriment to its performance. With AlphaStar, we see a similar picture. The system can only play a limited version of StarCraft II. When AlphaStar was first debuted in late 2018, early 2019, it could only play on one map while StarCraft offers more than 30 per season. It could only play one game mode, one versus one, while StarCraft supports game modes of up to 4v4 and free-for-all. And it could only play as one character race, while StarCraft has three. As of October 2019 in the most recent publication, AlphaStar was able to play all three races, four maps, and still only play 1v1. Humans, on the other hand, are extreme generalizers. We deal with things all of the time that neither we, nor our friends, nor our ancestors have ever dealt with. And amazingly, not only can we deal with all of these things that no one's ever seen before, but we can generate things that no one's ever seen before. This is the creative process behind all of our science, technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence. These are things that we generated that haven't existed before. So this raises some really interesting questions that we want to get at the heart of in this channel. And those are, what is the difference between machines and humans that allow us to be extreme generalizers and prevent machines from being even broad generalizers? And what is being done to bridge the gap between machines and humans so that machines can start thinking and learning more like we do? So that's it for this episode. Next episode, we'll be finishing this story on generalization, specifically looking at what's being done to address the problems of generalization. What might we gain from cognitive science and psychology when it comes to building more generalizable machines and AI? And what do you think are the biggest problems in AI today? Let me know below. I'll see you next time.